Welcome back. Let's now take a look at our fact check segment today. And of course, uh, it's all about uh, the big conversation uh, that was had. The Deputy President William Ruto had a conversation on a television interview. And of course, the issue that is plaguing the country right now, the high cost of living, particularly the cost of maize flour, came up in that one. So uh, let's bring in our Alphonse Shundu, who's the Kenya editor for Africa Check. He joins us every single week right here. So let's take a quick look at our super wall um, so that we can take a look at that statement that was made before we play it to you. This is what he said in that television interview. It was all about duty waiver. Remember, there's been this huge debate over just how long it took for the maize to come from Mexico, was it South Africa, all the way till here? Was it three days? A lot was said about it. Now, this is what he said. This is a specific claim we're going to check out tonight. The duty waiver was made in April. We actually asked importers to import maize from as early as one month ago. This is the claim that we're checking. But let's hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. We announced duty waiver one month ago. The duty waiver was made in April. So any serious, and we actually asked importers to import maize mm -hmm. from as early as one month ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one has got a lot of people talking. Um, Alphonse is here with me, so let's take a look at the next one um, and see whether this was in fact true. Alphonse, you can take us through this, yes? We uh, first heard of this importation of maize during the budget speech. Yes, on, right? March, on March 30th. Uh -huh. uh, First, we first heard about it when, on March 23rd when the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture approached the Treasury and he said they are negotiating with the Treasury to get yellow maize mm -hmm. for animal feeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then come budget day on March 30th, mm -hmm. that's when Rotich made this statement. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, for the next four months, uh, until July, mm. peop, uh, people can import white maize. Right. And until August, uh, people are free to, uh, at least 22 companies yeah. were allowed to import uh, yellow maize. Okay. Yes. And, in, uh, and it's after this that he went ahead, okay, uh -huh. and uh, like formalized it through uh -huh. a gazette notice. Through a gazette notice. So let's yes. take a look at the next one uh, for that one. Now, this is what happened on the 13th of April. That's what you're referring to, the gazette yeah. notice, yes? Yes. All right. And just so that we clear this up, this is gazette notice number? 3575. Good. Yes. All right. So he published this allowing those 22 companies you're talking about mm -hmm. to bring in yellow maize, which was strictly for animal feed, yes. uh, but also to import white maize for yeah. human consumption. Yes. Any okay. person was allowed to import right. white maize. And in this Gazette notice, uh, Rotich gave the conditions for mm -hmm. people to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an element of the moisture content in the maize, right. uh, aflatoxin, mm -hmm. Uh, the clearance by the Kenya Bureau of Standards mm -hmm. and uh, for the animal feeds there was a condition that as soon as the main maize lands in Mombasa it is transferred directly to the factories okay but that that condition wasn't on the on the white maize right yes. okay so um, therefore we come to the verdict uh, of this so with that specific or do you want to uh, add something yes before you go to the okay. verdict uh -huh. uh, you remember KRA on May uh, I think May 10th. Right. Yes. Uh, the, the, the May 4th, that's when they issued that, uh, they formalized sort of mm -hmm. the Rotich notice. Mm -hmm. And then the maize arrives here on the May yes. 12th and people are like, what? What uh, happened? What, what was happened? this timeline? Yeah. What were we waiting for? What, what, what was this all about? Okay. Yes. So wondering how fast it could have happened. Yes. But in as far as uh, the deputy president's claim yes. that there was indeed a duty waiver one month before the maize came in, if we can have the verdict, this the, was? Correct. The okay. evidence that we have is correct. What we did not go to check out is uh, where the maize came from mm -hmm. because, you, you know, the government has contradicting yeah. uh, statements. And, right. and the last I heard, the cabinet secretary for agriculture decided to not to comment on it and he said we let the millers to deal with it uh -huh. uh, so we're not commenting but and, then, and and to be fair also in this yes. interview he was asked uh, you know repeatedly about who imported the maize he uh -huh. declined to answer that question yes about which milling company and why the government would be receiving this maize and not the private miller that imported it uh, touche but yes. in as far as that statement that the duty waiver was done a month before that fact 
is correct. Okay, all so right. So that's our fact check for today. And a full report uh, of this is on africacheck.org. Mm. And this is not the only statement that we checked. Yeah. We also checked his statement on debt. Mm -hmm. And we found that he was downplaying the debt to GDP ratio. Mm -hmm. So we rated it understated. Mm -hmm. So we also checked his statement that he, Jubilee government had connected 6 million people uh -huh. to the national grid. That electricity one, yeah. We've yes. taken a look at that as we well looked, without previous statements. Yes. yes. And, that and was, also on the police. Uh, on the police ratio. The police ratio. to population ratio. Yes. Okay. So all, all that is on our, our website. The report, the full report is there. And you can, you can check it and ask assess it and right. see if he told you the truth or... Okay, so yeah. today, can we have that nice little ringing verdict? The Deputy President, William Ruto, on the importation duty waiver on maize was, if you can have that right now, would be great. It's... There we go. It's fact. So, um, like we said, um, it was a wide-ranging interview conversation he had. The rest of the details are on africacheck.org. We thank you, Shundu, for always joining us. Alphonse Shundu, everyone, the Kenya editor for Africa Check. So we'll keep on checking those statements made by political leaders. Fact check. I guess the big one is to find out where the maze actually came from. I've gotten a lot of tweets on that. <laughs> at Shundu, at Yvonne Okwara, uh, at KTN News, at Africa Check. The hashtag is fact check. That's our fact check for tonight. Thank Let's you. wait for the stoning on Twitter. Uh, right. We're taking a short break. We'll be right